guys, welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to talk about advocacy. Advocacy, you guys, is so important. It is so important to learn how to advocate for yourself, how as parents to advocate on behalf of your children, and then as parents teaching your children how to advocate for themselves, right? It is so, so important. I am so blessed that I had amazing parents who were my biggest advocates. They taught me how to use my voice to make a difference. It was difficult growing up blind and with juvenile arthritis and trying to get teachers in school to understand my needs and to have them provide them for me. The school systems were not always willing to work with me. It was really hard and my parents fought for me and they loved me so much they fought so hard for me and then they taught me how to fight for myself how to stand up and use my voice and i was a shy kid i did not like talking i didn't imagine that me <laughs> not liking to talk um i was uh, i was afraid to speak my mind and to say anything you know to someone over me and um, my parents just taught me not to be worried about what others think. They're the ones who made me into who I am. They gave me so much um, amazing qualities that I have today. And I'm so blessed for that. I love you, Mom and Daddy. Um, but now as an adult, married with children, I'm now having to teach my children how to advocate for themselves. And I know that they have been watching me, especially over the past you know, nine years of being completely blind. And I have to advocate so much and I do it so much through my videos and everywhere I go, I'm, I'm speaking and sharing um, my, uh, my life story. And um, I have to, on a daily basis, express to people, whether it be um, in a store, um, wherever, um, you know, getting into Ubers, where I have to assert, be assertive and say, this is what I need from you. Um, if, you know, no, I can't expect others to know what, what to do for me if they have no idea. You know, they've never worked with someone who's blind. They've never helped someone who's blind. So I, I every, every day I have to, you know, teach and educate those around me and knowing how to work with me and to help me best, right? So my girls have been watching this. Um, but now they are really having to learn how to apply these skills in their own life, these life lessons in their own life. They're taking the lessons that I have you know, been teaching them and now they're having to apply them in their own everyday life. And the reason I'm doing this video today is because it is so real right now. Um, I know my girls have been big advocates um, on behalf of the Authorized Foundation. We go to Washington, D.C., and we advocate on Capitol Hill, and we talk with our lawmakers, and my girls are totally great with that. They're not intimidated at all to talk with their, their state legislators, and um, they're not afraid to speak in, in, in their classes with their, their peers and their, in their schools and to share their story. That's great. They have that. That's wonderful. They're not afraid. But what now I'm seeing with Georgiana is now learning how to share with her teachers what's going on with her, you know, her physical health with her juvenile arthritis. So in January, Georgiana was diagnosed with chronic juvenile arthritis in 12 of her joints. It affects her jaws, her fingers, her knees, and her ankles. And it is really, really severe and really bad. And she's on chemotherapy and steroids, and it's not really working very well yet. And in January, after she was diagnosed, we set up a 504 meeting with all of her teachers at school. And a 504 um, plan was put into place. Um, and that, if you don't know, a 504 plan just provides students with disabilities. It provides them accommodations, all the special accommodations they need to be successful in the classroom and in school and to keep up with all the other students. So that may be, like for Georgiana, it may um, be a lighter load of homework or schoolwork, um, an extended time on tests, or someone to take notes for Georgie if her hands are too painful to write in, in, in class, or to sit closer to um, an outlet where she can have her heating pad uh, plugged in. So there's so many accommodations and we put into her plan. Well, that day we had our meeting, with her teachers and her guidance counselor, my husband and I, we really just explained to them um, about juvenile arthritis, right? Because they didn't know about it. 
and what that means and what it looks like and what it looks like for Georgie and what she's going through in her treatments and how she will feel uh, possibly every on a day-to-day -day basis, week-to-week -week basis. It might be good one week, it might be bad another week. Um, she's gonna probably miss more school because uh, the drugs that she's on suppress her immune system so she gets more infections. So we were just preparing them for everything that was to come. And the teachers were wonderful. They were awesome. They, they um, you know, really were just understanding and all of that, right? We go to a great school and a great school district. So um, we were very, we were very pleased with, with how the meeting turned out. So then um, the teachers were great and they were, you know, emailing us in open communication and were saying they were, uh, you know, lightening Georgie's load and blah, blah, blah. Well, um, fast forward. So Friday, Georgiana comes home from school and she was talking about one of her teachers. And this is one of the teachers she has where she likes the teacher okay, but the teacher can be scary. You know what I mean? Like she's intimidating, she's older, and she just is more firm, and she just terrifies Georgie, I think, <laughs> slightly. And I know she's, she doesn't probably mean to come off that way, but she does. I've had teachers like that too. And Georgiana has been more bashful when it comes to speaking to teachers. And she doesn't want to cause any trouble. She wants to make them, you know, she wants them to approve of her and uh, she always wants to please them. And this teacher, Georgie says, has not really been lightening her load. And, you know, she's had the same expectations for Georgie as for all of her students. So, um, and so Georgie comes home and she says, Mommy, she pulled me aside today and Georgie has a couple assignments she still needed to turn in um, since she's been absent quite a bit lately. And she's been catching up on all of her, stu all of her studies, you know, from all her classes and it's a lot. And this teacher said, well, Georgie, she's like, um, you still have to turn in these assignments and I don't understand why you can't do it. She goes, I had a, I had a student once upon a time who had an autoimmune disease. Didn't say it was the same, it wasn't due to arthritis, just an autoimmune disease where she got sick a lot. She missed a lot of school and she somehow made up all of her work on time. She did it, Georgie. Why can't you? And I'm like, she said that to you? And Georgie's like, Mommy, yeah, I wanted to cry, Mommy, because I'm trying my best. And I said, well, did you say that to her? And she's like, Mama, I couldn't, I didn't know what to say. And, um, and I'm like, oh my goodness, Georgie, you have to learn how to, to, to say no. I'm doing my best. You have to advocate for yourself, baby girl. Um, you know, so this is this is something I've been teaching her over the past couple of months. I've been just trying to just speak this into her, like, okay, if you're having a bad day, make sure you tell your teachers, right? Like, speak up, blah, blah, blah. And it's just been really difficult for Georgie. Well, now this situation came about, and she had this meeting with the teacher, and the teacher is making her feel awful because she doesn't think that Georgie's trying hard enough, and Georgie's giving it all she's got, and then Georgie's just feeling like she's, like, you know, um, she's just being, she's disappointed the teacher. And, um, and I think her teacher thinks that she's just basically faking or she's using her authoress as an excuse. And as mama, right? Mama, I'm like, mama bear, I'm like, no, we are going to call the teacher, I'm gonna call her and we're gonna take care of this. Uh, and my husband and I were both on board with this. I'm like, uh, he was frustrated too. And that, so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna call Monday. So I called yesterday, didn't get her, and left her this long lengthy voicemail expressing to this teacher, um, about this conversation I heard you know she had had with Georgie and how that that was inappropriate to even compare the two because you cannot compare one kid's illness to another kid's illness right every kid's different they're not going to be the same you can't expect the same from each child from every child and um, I told her what she's been going through and how like Friday night she couldn't even take all her chemo she threw it up like this is how severe this is, this disease is. It's not just physical, but it's also emotional. And handling all the stress of all the work and making it all, all up and then having the stress of the teacher, you know, this teacher breathing down her throat and breathing you know, down her neck and saying, you have to do this A, B, and C just like somebody else has done. And I expect this from you. And like that is putting so much stress on my baby. So I expressed all this to her in this voice, in this voicemail, politely. And she called me back today. 
and we discussed, we had a really nice conversation. She said, I apologize. We had a conversation with Georgie, and I apologize to Georgie for comparing her to another student. Um, she's like, I didn't understand her situation. I didn't understand it was this bad. And um, she's like, but I want Georgie to, to, to tell me when she's you know, having bad days. And I said, this is what I've also been talking with Georgie about, about being her own best advocate. She cannot expect the teachers you know, to understand what she's feeling. So I said this to the teacher that I'm teaching Georgie these skills as well, but I need at the same time you as teacher, right, to understand my child and what she's going through and be sensitive to her. So she's like, okay, she's like, what, what can I do, blah, blah, blah. So I was going through all of these different things that she can do to help Georgie with um, open communication, checking in on Georgie um, every day, asking her how she's doing. Is this a good day, is this a bad day? What does she need help with? Because that will make Georgie feel more comfortable with her, right? Um, also, like possibly um, Georgie writing a note to the teacher so she doesn't have to express her needs in front of a huge classroom. Um, so, you know, that's, that's hard to when you're singled out as a child in the classroom. You have these needs and you want to talk to the teacher, but you're, you're, you're kind of shy and you're embarrassed because you don't want to be singled out. And so, yeah, so the teacher thought, you know, so that was a good idea. So we're going to possibly, you know, have Georgie write notes if she needs to communicate with a teacher um, inside the classroom. Um, so that was good. So we, we were talking about note takers and um, doing tests orally and things like this so Georgie doesn't have to write. So I feel like this was a positive experience. The teacher um, was willing to learn um, and I, it just required me being more assertive and advocating for my child and, and then teaching Georgiana how to advocate for herself. So. I'm just so pleased though because Georgiana called me this afternoon at school. She called me and she told me about the meeting and how she um, talked to her teacher and she was advocating for herself that she cried. And I had told Jordy it's okay to cry because if you show your emotions, like when you're feeling them, don't try to hide it from your teacher. Be real. They need to see your heart. They need to see what you're feeling for them to understand what you're going through. And it's not, it's not a shame to cry in front of a teacher or in front of even a friend if, if you feel it, right? Um, and she said, so I cried and she asked me if she could give me a hug. So I said, well, that was good. And, uh, and so anyway, so then Georgian says that another teacher, one of her other teachers, her math teacher, pulled her aside today too and she congratulated Georgie because get this, out of all the kids in her math class, her teacher said, Georgiana, you have the highest grade of the whole class. I'm so proud of my Georgie. I'm so proud of her. I was so, I'm so, um, I'm just so proud that she is working so hard and she is doing her very best. And um, I just, I knew that, that that totally made her day. I could hear the change in her voice. And um, and so I just called the other teacher back today and I just said, just letting you know that Georgie is, and to prove she's doing her very best in all of her subjects, she has the highest grade in her math class, um, her teacher told her today. So she is working hard. And, um, and Georgie did tell me today, she goes, Mama, I checked on all my grades and I have straight A's now. And you know, it's just a teacher, her other teacher that I talked to today excused those, um, those assignments and now she has, uh, she has straight A's. So I am so pleased, um, I'm so pleased. So it, this is progress, it's progress, right? So, you know, Georgiana is learning and um, maybe your child, you know, is going through a rough spell at school. It might not be with, you know, um, with an illness, um, but it could be with bully, being bullied and, um, and peer pressure. And these are just great skills to teach your children um, to stand up for themselves and to use their voice and to not let people, um, you know, just, um, just either walk, uh, walk over them or to dictate to them what they expect from them, you know, for them just to use their voice and to share their, their opinions and their heart with people around them because that's how we can educate, that's how we bring, um, bring forth change, right? So anyway, hopefully something I said today is uh, encouraging you in your life, and you might not be a child or a parent, but an individual, right? Just have boldness to, to just stand up and to speak your mind and, your, and just to share your heart, you know, um, and to get your point across. Um, people will listen if you share it in the right way, 
Sometimes you might have to push a little harder. You have to be a little bit more bold and be a little bit more forceful, but just keep at it. Keep fighting, keep fighting parents, keep fighting for your kids. You just keep leading by example and your children are gonna learn and they're gonna continue um, you know, being their own best advocate throughout their life. And yeah, so just you guys all keep making a difference. And um, I know it's gonna be, you're gonna do awesome, right? We're, we're all learning every day, right? Um, I find strength and confidence every day to be more of an advocate for myself. And, um, and now it's paying off to teach this to my kids. So anyway, being courage today, right? We have to make it, we have to use our voice to bring forth change, right? We can't expect it to happen just by sitting around and waiting, right? And expecting people to just to get it on their own. So just use your voice. Yep. Okay. You can do it. All right. Love y'all. Have a wonderful rest of your day. All right. God bless. Mwah.